No more show at late night. <laughs> Nothing but illustrious guests tonight. That's right. We got Malcolm Jenkins, safety for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Come on up, brother. Yeah. Woo! How y'all feeling? I'm uh, feeling good. Yeah. You know, we just finished up uh, spring ball mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we off for a few weeks before we start back up training camp. All yeah. right. Looking pretty good. What do you, like, do you just binge out in the summer, just eat garbage, and then you're like, yo, when it's time to get in shape, I'll handle all that? Nah, you know, the worst thing is trying to get back in shape. Mm -hmm. That hurts. Yeah. So, you, know, you just stay in shape, you know. So you don't take no time bit. off? Like, you just gotta stay at it? Yeah, stay, I stay, stay, stay active. I'm not training super, super hard, but mm -hmm. I gotta stay active, because that those two weeks, Trying to get back in shape before yeah. training camp, that, that sucks. You doing a LeBron shit, standing on the ball with the giant ropes and shit like what's that? The wild, what's the wild <laughs> exercise you do that if we saw? We'd be like, yo, you I bugging. Do, nah, I don't do crazy wild. Stuff. Nah, I'm like old school. Out shopping? Push-ups? Yeah. On the desk? <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> like, ah, what? Shit. You never be pulling trucks or nothing? Nah, I'm not, nah. I'm not flipping tires. You never got, like oh, you don't flip tires nah, either? Nah. I thought that was normal. Nah, that's that's like if you got Instagram, you want to show Oh, okay. I thought that was just like Monday, like. Nah. So you basically tell be like Odell Beckham don't gotta be doing all that? No, man, he go run around <laughs> soccer ball. You don't dab a lot? Or when you work it out? I don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, a, that's the new generation of players. <laughs> what was it like being a football star at Ohio State? Uh, it was fun. I'm from Jersey originally, mm -hmm. so going all the way out to, to Ohio uh, was different. Yeah. I moved out there, but it was fun, man. I played on the Jim Trestle. Um, Legendary. Went, yeah, we went to two national championships. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. lost both of them. Right. Well, but uh, you know, I mean, it was cool. I had a good time. But you did get. You have a Super Bowl ring. I do. I can't. Yeah, my first year in the league, got a Super Bowl ring, and been chasing it ever since. Well, I mean, what's that like? Your first year, you got it. Yeah, so like I most people, you got, yeah. yeah. So, so high school, I won three state championships. Went yeah. to Ohio State. Went to two national championships. Mm -hmm. Four bowl games in a row. Get to the league. I win a Super Bowl. I'm like, okay. Good money. Like, you got to fill yeah. in. It was like, what is that? It, man, I ain't made the playoffs. So but it's, it's tough, it? man. Working on it, man. So I, I've seen it, you know, in New Orleans. That was the first time that team won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Been to the Super Bowl, man, right? Uh, so you know, I'm trying to get that same thing in Philly. You was yeah. doing numbers out there. Yeah. What's it like playing? Yeah. <laughs> what's it like playing in Philly? Because as we know, Philly can be a little aggressive. The fans. Yeah. So I, I already know. You know, being from Jersey, how that was mm -hmm. that was going to be mm. when I got there. So I know it's your first impression is is the main one. Yeah, so those first four or five games that I had were were great. So I got on that good side early. I didn't see right. what that looks like when, when you're on the bad side. side. Yeah, it's, it's a tough place to play, but you know they love the fan. They they love the team. They're passionate. As mm -hmm. long as you come out, you work hard, you have some enthusiasm, you're good. So you grew up in the Giants part of Jersey or the, or the Eagles part of Jersey? I grew up in uh, Giants. Territory. My right, dad right. used to be a Giants fan. He's uh, recently converted to it. That's <laughs> the hell. But you know, that's the least you can do if you're I mean, if if you're on a team. Child is playing I, I understand. You, you can root for that. Back. Yeah, yeah, of course. Imagine um, you still pull up in an Eli jersey like yo. Nah, he can't, he can't do it when I pick Eli <laughs> off. He can't, can't have him with Eli. <laughs> can't come home with a combo roasting. <laughs> My boy, pop. <laughs> Who's your favorite team to play against? Uh, my favorite team to play against has got to be. Anybody in the, in the East, yeah. the NFC East is fun. The Giants is fun. Going to Dallas is fun. The Redskins is always competitive. Uh, you said Tony Romo's out. You can't pick him off in the fourth quarter with ten seconds left. Yeah, I, you know what? That's the one I hadn't. Pick, I never picked him off. So oh, yeah? that's unfortunate. Oh damn! Tony was giving him out, but you never got like. I know. Yeah. I felt. I felt like it was personal. You know? He's coming like, back. He's coming back. He's like, I got you. I got you. I'm gonna come back for one. Giving out rain checks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> what's the biggest hit? You ever inflicted on an opponent? Do you have them in your head like ranked or? Uh, nah. The ones that are ranked, the ones that I got hit. Yeah. Like the hardest I've ever got hit in my life was my freshman year at Ohio State. We played Texas week two, mm -hmm. and so I'm running down on kickoff. The special teams player, the dude, has got the ball right in front of me. I'm like, okay, about to make my first tackle in college, and I just get blindsided by somebody who's probably 250 pounds. Mm. And he gets up, he's celebrating over me, and all I could think was like, just take your time, bro, because I'm not ready to I'm like, do the whole do the whole team, whole celebrate. I'm like, that was the hardest I've ever been hit. My mom called me, she's like, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's only my second game. She's like, you can still just go to school. <laughs> He's still gonna give you the money. Yeah, oh. I still wake up the nightmares that I hit. When you get hit like that, how long does it take you to recover? Because you you get up, you gotta finish the game, but like you feeling that two days later, three days later. So that hit in particular, I, I got up. As soon as he got done celebrating, I got up, I walked like it, you know, didn't hurt. Sat mm -hmm. sat down on the bench. With a light jog. And I sat down on the bench, and I kind of looked forward, and my boys looked at me just like y'all looking like. Bro, <laughs> you, know, you know we saw that. <laughs> 
<laughs> about 10 minutes later, I like start coughing. I start coughing up blood. I'm like, yo, what? yeah, I was, I was messed up. Oh, but, uh, yo, who but, was that dude? Do you remember his name? I do not. He, <laughs> I mean, he watches at home like, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had some fun with that tape. But yeah, I mean, you know, after that though, your body gets a little used to, to it. it. Took about seven days to recover from every every game, but mm. at the, from that point forward, I was never 100. <laughs> percent Do you think they're talking about adding games to the schedule? You think they should add games or take away games? Because some people are like, yo, Thursday night is crazy. Like Thursday night games be trash. Yeah, I think the players, you know, I think we're good with 16 games. We don't want to add any more games. Right. Uh -huh. We don't need to take any away. But we do. I know a lot of players have problems with that Thursday night game, mm. especially if you got to travel. Right. Just the turnaround. You play on Sunday. You don't practice at all. Really, you do a couple walkthroughs, and then you got to play on Thursday, and like I said, it takes a full seven days to recover mm -hmm. from a game. That's that's tough on some guys, especially mm -hmm. late in the year. Yeah. You're talking about like week 15, and you got to play on a Thursday, that, that hurts. Yeah. Dang. I'm feeling the same way, bro. Thursday shows up, i like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I smoke an extra L and shit. <laughs> <laughs> You've been involved in uh, criminal justice reform? Yes. Do you feel being an athlete helps you Definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, for me, it started uh, last year when uh, Philando Castell was was shot. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and then you had Alton Sterling was uh, within a day of that. Then you had five officers in Dallas shot. You yeah. know, I'm like, all right, I want to do something, and that kind of got me into uh, criminal justice reform. And a group of players, including myself, was were able to go to D.C. meet with members of Congress, and that's kind of when I realized, like, being a football player, being an athlete, it gets you access to people that. Uh, the people who do this work every day mm -hmm. can't get. Right. You know what I mean? So the people like Black Lives Matter, who, all of these other ground roots uh, organizations can't just walk up, go to Capitol Hill and just sit down with a yeah, congressman yeah. or just walk into a police station and sit down with the chief of police. Right. We can do that. And so we're trying to use that, that platform to kind of bridge some gaps, to put some pressure on some people to make decisions, uh, you know, and, and continue to, to, to push that agenda. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, are you afraid of getting blackballed? Because we see some, you know, we don't got to say names, but yeah. certain players for taking a political stance and getting, like, pushed out the league. Is that something you fear? or uh, just like, Not really. I mean, at this point, you know, I, I think my desire to actually make something happen uh, to change, you know, for the better is, is more important than me getting blackballed. And But I think it's also about the way you go about it. You know, if, you, if you're smart about how you leverage it and you build a voice behind you, you're not out there by yourself, it's harder for them to really attack you and pick you apart as long as you communicate your message, you stay on message, um, and, and like I said, you bring some others with you. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what we've been doing. We started this coalition of players uh, across the league. We're about to try to reach out to some NBA guys so that we, we can, one, unify the voices, get more done, and, and focus in different states in the country. Who else is involved in it? So we started with myself, um, Andrew Hawkins, um, Anquan Bolden, and maybe two other guys, and now we're about a group of 25 players across the league uh, getting ready, like I said, to reach out to some NBA guys and see if we can keep it going. Yo, Mellow Holla, you know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> Yo, we out here. It is. So in the past year, you visited a prison, and you've also gone along on police ride-arounds. Yep. Has this changed your view of what's going on in the areas you're trying to change? No, but it changes. It changed my perspective of, of how to communicate it. And right. so the first thing I wanted to do was talk to the police, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, it had been very easy for me to just be like, fuck the police, right, right. you know, but I'm like, you know what, I want to hear from their voice what, what the issues are. I want to see what they deal with um, and also bring the voices of the community to the table. And in doing that, um, you know, there was some common ground, some tough conversations and, and through the ride along, I was able to see examples of police officers that do it right, mm -hmm. that I, we can go into the, the neighborhood, it's an all black neighborhood, a white, white officer and all of them give him hugs and they, they know him, he knows them, knows the kids. Uh, and then we can go into another one, we responded to a, a shooting mm -hmm. and it's a group of 10 officers all in the middle of the street, nobody's talking to anybody, the, there's plenty of people out in the community, but there's no relationship, everybody's frustrated. And so you can see where it was broken. And that, that led to more of the criminal justice system and prisons and, and mass incarceration. So I was advised, you should probably go speak to some of the prisoners. Mm -hmm. So I took a trip to uh, Graterford Prison, sat down, one tour the facilities. I'd never been in a correctional facility. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Uh, it was crazy, because uh, I thought we were gonna have more security, or right. needed more security. So, but it was just us and three women giving us the tour, mm -hmm. and they took us into the B block and closed the door behind us, and I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, yo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all gonna come get me, yeah. right? Like 20, 15 minutes? <laughs> 
<laughs> but it changed my perspective because I'm like, I really had no reason to, to feel that way, right. which is, I think, everybody's false perception. And then we were able to sit down, a group of inmates, just us, the, all the security left the room and left, let us to talk. And it was um, eye-opening because I think four out of the six guys that sat there were juvenile lifers. All of them had been in prison longer than I've been alive. One dude went in at 14 wow. and was still incarcerated. So just taking that and getting that perspective of just what kind of uh, life these guys are actually living, mm -hmm. because we don't get to see that. You know, somebody gets sent off and they commit a crime. We, it's easy for us to be like, well, you did a crime due to time, and then we go about our days. But to try to bring that, uh, that voice kind of out to the public so that people know what's going on, and then know what it's like in there so that when these people do get out, mm -hmm. We want them to be upstanding citizens. We want them to, to be productive. And we, we want to feel safe when they get out. Right. Well, we got to look out for them along that process. And that's something that's not happening now that we're trying to push for. So you could have just been like the wild NFL star, have like the private jets, the gold teeth, mad you know cars. And double top you all the time. What made you want to be conscious? Double top you? Yeah, double top you. <laughs> Yo, when you want to stop, 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 stop. When you won that Super Bowl New Orleans, you was getting double toppy. Stop. Nah, well, nah, nah, nah. Come on. First time ever New Orleans? Nah, nah. History? Nah, nah. Come on. Why, 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 why are you being hot? No, no. Why are you being no, hot? No, that's not hot. That, that's hot. That was years ago. Your man's over here talking about criminal nah, justice yeah. reform. That was years ago. About getting oh, double toppy. I, I was with my wife at the time. See? Oh, wait. See? Oh, 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 yeah, no, no. So now. See? My girlfriend at the time. Oh, okay, yeah. Wife, not yet. He hasn't seen Now we got the flies in here. The whole interview's falling apart. No, what Shake made you? What made you say I need to get involved in this and like try to reform things? Because you didn't have to, and this is actually. This seems like this is taking energy from you. You could be doing so yeah. many other things, but I mean, is this something of, you've always been passionate, even as a child? No, nah, it's something I've always been one to, to kind of speak up mm -hmm. on things that I that I you know feel passionate about. And like I said, once I once last summer with um, Philando Castell, Alton Sterling, it was just like you know what I, I want to do something, and that started with a conversation which led to. A, a ride along, which led to going to Congress, which led to a, a prison visit. And mm -hmm. then it just, con the more I learned, the more I felt empowered, the more I felt like I could do something. Mm -hmm. And I just continued to do it, trying to organize other guys. Cause like you said, I could do something else, but at the end of the day, football, like, you know, when I died. It's you know, you keep fly, studying right now with the fly. Yo, he was getting, he was holding it out. He was holding it out. Yo, let me see. Yo, you were doing good there. <laughs> I'm, I've never been so embarrassed. Solid. Before. No, my man was solid. Forget, nah, nah, forget that. He was solid, he was solid. You would have given him the chopsticks, you would have caught that motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You would have caught him. You ever been talking to like a leader or like a business person and they, they just wanted to like talk about sports? So they like start riffing with you because you're an Eagles? Oh, all the time. I mean, you know, but that's half the thing. We go into, you know, we met with a bunch of congressmen and uh, they're, they all fans. Mm -hmm. So they want to talk football. We're like, no, 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 let's talk about this mass talk incarceration. About the real thing? Oh, yeah. We can talk about that afterwards. But, you know, that's. That's part of it. You know, people wanting to be around athletes, that's mm -hmm. something that you can't buy. Right. You know what I mean? Donald Trump, no matter how hard he, he tries, can't be an athlete unless he, unless he pay, and you can't pay for it. I mean, you see, I mean, you see no, you seen his tennis photo? No, no, not that, I'm talking about yo. football. Nah, listen, <laughs> yo, yo, listen yo. show his tennis photo. Yo, yeah, let's see tennis. this. Tennis show, show his Instagram yeah, model tennis photo. Yo, look at this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, wow. got the kinks <laughs> out. Oh, my son got the kinks out. No! Okay, right. And he got the diaper on! Yeah, my son the got the diaper on! He got the under there. Like, yo. yo. Fam! I don't think you're ready for this what? jelly. Is that the underhand? <laughs> yo, this is a scoop. Stroke? Yo, shout out to the... He... <laughs> He threw the MAGA hat on, though. I like yeah, that. He's, he's, he's like, branded. Yeah, he's, like, yeah. he's just like LeVar like, Ball. Sure he's just like, yo, yeah, big baller, baby. Synergy. Synergy, hold this. Ace. So wait, you're a step master? Is that, what is that? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I'm a mega sci-fi in my fraternity. OK. okay. Oh, OK. So, you know, little Greeks out there. All right, all right. So every, uh, you know, chapter usually on campus has, you know, master of steps. That mm -hmm. was me when I was at school. OK. Yeah. All right, all right. What's your, what's your dancing level at? Damn, I'm not a dancer at no, all. Dan I mean, like, what's your? You know, but you know, we so we have a uh, one of the big honors. We have a national convention every two years, mm -hmm. call it our conclave, and we do uh, every pretty much every campus around the country does like a march down into your districts, and then the finals are kind of uh, at that that conclave. And I, I was able to step there. We didn't win, mm -hmm. but my chapter was representing our whole district, so that was kind of my my highlight as a step master. After that, I passed the torch. Do y'all use music or not? Uh, sometimes. So, so well, when we when we march, we don't. Right. Marching is, is no music. We just kind of create our own beats. But we also do what we call like a party walk. We throw on a song, mm -hmm. 
And then you'll have all the Greeks kind of, if you've ever been to any black party. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you just party. a circle around the party. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yo, chill, don't break the law. We'll yeah. fuck you up. I'm like, yo, suck, come on. It's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Crip walking and shit. Like, they're like, no, 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 that's not what it is. Yeah, that's not what it is. Yeah, that's not what it is. Yeah. What's, <laughs> don't walk in between the lines. Yeah, what's, no, the, no, what's the no, hardest no, song for, like, the party walk? Like, what's the one that people... Oh, the Q's are known for the Atomic Dog. Of course, everyone knows that. I don't know nothing about frats. I know that. Uh... Father Mother Niggas is a big that, one. That one goes hard. That goes hard. Yeah. That goes hard. That one goes hard. And we're supposed to make the face like, whoa. Yeah, all of a sudden, I'm everybody's face like, What's going crazy. on, bro? Remember back in the day, remember, was it fun. drama, left, right, left? Yep. I remember that, yeah, yeah. left, right. That's yeah, a yeah. dope one. So you was playing football and living that Greek life. You must have went to some wild parties, dog, in college. I did. I, I was then? more of a house party guy than, mm-hmm. than a club. Oh, them shits get wilder than yeah, clubs. Yeah, they do. It was fun. <laughs> it got to the point where we were charging, you know, our campus parties were so lit, we were charging dudes $40 to get in. <laughs> <laughs> what? Where? And so it's, <laughs> this is what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we were doing. Yo, you said $40. Yo, uh, fam, you invite like me somewhere at like five. I'm like, ah. You was doing the same thing. Yo, let me know who's popping. I watch the snap. I watch the snap. Coming, yo, you gonna come through? I watch you on the snap. Come through? Nah, I'll hit you on the snap. Yo, hit me snap. when you there and I'll let come know. through. Let me know. Let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dudes would say the same thing. <laughs> walk in like $40. $40. We'd be like, all right, excuse me, step to the side. And then like 10 women walk in. And they're like, damn. Yo, $40 is like New Year's. Like, whoa. We had all the drinks, we had food. Music, it didn't close. We went to like six in the morning. Damn, bro. Time. I paid forty dollars. I gotta shoot that car up. <laughs> 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 like fuck that. Nobody going home. <laughs> You've been hit by other people. You've been knocked out cold. Mm-hmm. But this might be the scariest moment of your life. What do you want your rainbow to say? Hmm. What happens on Earth stays on Earth. <sighs> Think about that. And everybody, smoke, everybody watching this shit smoking back. <laughs> they're like, they just sit there and like, oh, yo. Yo, dead ass though, he's right. Yo. yo. You are watching the Jesus and Miro YouTube channel. So subscribe, it's click the buttons, us. all the buttons right here. This is the real YouTube shit. You know what I'm saying? Out here. Gang, gang. Squad.